Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to speak to you today about a topic we've discussed before, which is the link between gluten and type 1 diabetes. But uh, a new study just came out in the Journal of Diabetes, and uh, it was just published actually several days ago. I'm taping this on April 15th, and it was published April 2nd. So definitely news. And what they did, the researchers worked with mice and they took uh, diabetic mice who were not obese. And the not obese uh, part is important because actually what they're doing is, is seeing a reduction in inflammation based on the gluten-free diet. But in an obese mouse, much like an obese human, uh, you have a lot of inflammatory factors happening due to the obesity. So they took the uh, weight factor out of the equation by making sure that these were um, diabetic mice, but they were not obese, and then they were pregnant. And so what they did was they had two groups, of course, the control group and uh, the gluten-free diet group. And so they put these mice on a gluten-free diet, and then, of course, the control group got the normal regular diet for mice, and uh, which contained gluten, of course. And what they found was a dramatic decrease in the incidence of diabetes in the pups, the offspring of these diabetic mice. And uh, what they did was they made sure that they were on their gluten-free diet throughout their pregnancy as well as through uh, the breastfeeding period of the baby mice. So um, the, the mice, uh, as I said, showed a dramatic decrease in the incidence of diabetes, which is very exciting. We've seen research like this before. There have been some more anecdotal studies that I've talked about in, in human children uh, being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and then being put on a gluten-free diet and seeing uh, a period where their diabetes reversed and whether you know, even though these studies only go on for so long, um, and one in particular, I think it was about two and a half years that the child was followed. And a lot of people said, was this just a honeymoon period? Was it temporary? And, and these are valid questions, absolutely. Um, but these, um, this particular study, as I said, is brand new. And I love what the authors said. I'm going to quote them. They said, a gluten-free diet is known to decrease type 1 diabetes incidence. And I think that's something that a lot of people aren't um, maybe not willing to look at, maybe willing is not the right word, but um, just don't want to confront that there is an association. And there is, you know, these scientists say it's known, it's not even postulated or thought to maybe be there, but it's absolutely known. And so they did their study um, on these pregnant mice to see if they could change the milieu or the environment of um, where the baby, you know, the baby mice were. Um, being housed in utero, uh, changing the environment there by changing the diet. And sure enough, they saw less inflammation in these, in these babies. They saw the immune response against the pancreas, which is what you would see in type 1 diabetes, wasn't occurring. So it's really, really exciting changes there. And it really goes to um, the information that we know about working with the gut and changing that environment of the gut to change the expression of genes. Because, um, you know, the, the mothers were, were type 1 diabetes, so the genetic uh, predisposition was there. So you, it was a great study because they knew, they knew the genetic predisposition was there, and all they did was change the diet. You know, that was the only thing that was altered, and they saw this dramatic decrease. So what does that mean for, for we humans? Uh, it means that if you're a type one diabetic mom or you have a lot of diabetes in your family, um, it would be a great idea to try a gluten-free diet when you're uh, pregnant and, and breastfeeding because it is thought and the study really validated it, and I know these are mice and not humans, uh, it's a lot easier to do studies on mice, um, but there is a tremendous amount, of, tremendous amount of research done on mice for the very reason that we can extrapolate from mice to humans, otherwise we would be using different animals. And um, no, it's not exactly the same, but as I said, there's, it's been done for many, many, many decades, and we do see the correlation. So I think this is exciting research and something to really um, look at for our future generation as far as things we can do to change that environment and then change the expression of genes. And I've talked about this in the past, but that doesn't mean you've heard it. Uh, but what it goes to is the fact that 
having a gene that predisposes you for a disease doesn't mean you're absolutely going to express that disease, type 1 diabetes or what have you. So it is the theory, and more and more research is supporting this, that um, the, how the uh, probiotics or the good bacteria of the gut, how they're functioning, um, allows you to have the ability to keep bad genes turned off. In other words, if you had the gene for type 1 diabetes, but you had a very robust, healthy population of your good bacteria in your gut, that microbiome, as it's called, that's the word to describe that whole population of good bacteria, it can actually suppress and keep turned off a bad gene. And it isn't until the health of that microbiome uh, weakens and lessens that then it can't keep that bad gene turned off anymore and the flip switches on and you do get the expression of that disease manifesting. So that was really what these researchers were, were looking at. And we have more and more information to support this. But once again, what it means for humans is we need a healthy gut and um, just having a predisposition to a disease in the family tree doesn't mean it has to be expressed uh, in your offspring. So even, you know, what, how do we look at this? Sure, we look at it for our future generations, but uh, what about a, a newly diagnosed child with type 1 diabetes? Uh, what about a newly diagnosed adult with type 1 diabetes? It really opens um, a world to how to make these diseases um, less intense, affecting the body less. Maybe that ability, because what research has shown is that early on in that diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, the pancreas still has a lot of ability to, to work. It's not completely turned off. So if you can stop that autoimmune process of that pancreas getting destroyed, uh, you could perhaps preserve some function of, of that pancreas. So all, all pretty exciting information. I wanted to share it with you. Uh, hopefully that helps someone that you know or yourself or some future generation who hasn't yet joined us. Um, but I thought it was very exciting and I think we'll definitely be hearing more about this association with a gluten-free diet lessening our incidence of type 1 diabetes. So um, send me your questions. I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.